Hi, and welcome to Spotlight on Bennington. I'm John Shanahan, the Downtown Director of the Better Bennington Corporation. I'd like to welcome you to the April edition of Spotlight on Bennington. And uh, before we even get started, I'm going to bring up uh, the new segment we added last week with the code word and the winner of this month's gift certificate. I'm going to invite you to go to our website, www.betterbennington.com, and there we're going to post the winner's name, just so I'm not saying it on television. But uh, congratulations. Uh, thanks for um, participating. And just want to remind anybody, or for, if you're seeing this show for the first time, at the end of each show, or near the end of each show, we say a code word. And if you go to our Facebook page and type in that code word, we pick a winner each month for a $25 gift certificate uh, for downtown. And you can shop in any, uh, any one of the businesses between 15 that are listed on the certificate. So thanks very much. There are you know, restaurant, clothing shops, the bakery, the chocolate shop. Um, so uh, stay tuned. We're going to say that code word somewhere near the end of the show. Uh, but before we do, we're going to start today's show uh, talking about activities. We're coming into the time of year where it's one activity after another. And today I have with me, uh, who you recognize from last year, uh, Jim Marshall. Jim, thanks for joining us. Absolutely, John. Thanks. Great to be here again. Yeah. It's been a year. Can yes. you believe it? Yeah, I know. It time seems flies. like just a month ago. Uh, you remember Jim Marshall. He's the one who brought the Tour of the Dragons bike race to Bennington uh, two years ago. Yes. Uh, going, this will be the third year. Absolutely. Uh, but lots of changes made this year. Some major changes. Um, we took out one course segment that we had last year, which was the downtown criterium. Yep. And uh, the reason was primarily that, um, you know, it was very complicated. It was very labor intensive on the town. All of the town was super helpful and very supportive to um, what was going on. Uh, they brought in, you know, a lot of resources, yeah. really backed us up, and that was super. But at the same time, it was very, very difficult on downtown merchants, uh, very difficult on us, and, uh, and on the residents in general. So what we were looking for was a solution that still had a, a great event that came into the downtown area, that still attracted a lot of people into the downtown That's area, cool. but minimized the impact on the immediate area downtown. So we've introduced a circuit race. Circuit race, by definition, is about, uh, six, well, it's a, it's a longer race. It's 16 miles long in this case. And we're going to start it at the Mount Anthony Union Middle School. And it's going to go north on East Road, then west on Houghton Lane, north on 7A into Shaftesbury, past the Shaftesbury uh, Country Store. Mm -hmm. And then it branches off into sort of North Shaftesbury on Airport Road, Cider Mill Road, Maple Hill Road, until it hits East Road again, and then comes all the way back down to Houghton Lane. And different from the criterion, this, where the roads were closed, this is going to be open to traffic. That is correct. So the roads will be careful. open to traffic. Yeah. Um, there will be a lot of riders. We expect, uh, actually, the, the uh, registration has been going very, very well so far this year. We're way above where we were at this time last year. Um, there will be a, a lot of racers on the road. They will be going way faster than you normally accept, expect cyclists to be going. And so we just ask people to be aware, to watch out, to give them a little bit more space, make it safe, make it a really positive experience for everybody. Yeah. And it's a win-win for everybody. We, absolutely. And, you know, even when it was downtown last year, most of the merchants know we all loved having it in Bennington. And it did cause issues with traffic and accessibility. But the one resounding um, message coming from the merchants were like, whatever it takes to keep it in Bennington. We don't want to be the ones sounding like we're complaining. We just want to be able to do business, but bring such a nice activity to Bennington. So it seems that you've, you've uh, figured that one out. It's uh, not a short, fast circle anymore. Now it's the longer race. Right. But, um, we've been talking with Dee up at um, East Road Variety. Yes. She's excited. She can't wait for this uh, event to take place. And I know in the meetings with the police and working out the logistics, it seems like it'll be a nice uh, 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 um, track. Yeah, a super uh, track. Like a, it's yeah. a really, it's a great track. Um, it does take in some of our more heavily used roads, but a big portion of the course is off on the back roads of Shaftesbury. Shaftesbury has been very supportive as well. Um, they fully came on board. Um, so it's, it's, it will still be fast, mm -hmm. uh, but it will be fast in an area where it sort of minimizes the impact on the residents. Okay, I'm going to back up a little bit. I don't think we even said the dates of the race. <laughs> no, jump right into it. Uh, May 4th 
is in Bennington and Shaftesbury and, and Palmel. And then May 5th, the race on Sunday moves up to Manchester and it goes north all the way to Danby this year and then Paulet all the way back down to Arlington and finishes in Manchester. So the amateur course is 71 miles long. It's about seven miles longer than it was last year. Mm -hmm. The pro course is 123 miles long. And that brings that, and plus all the climbing, which Vermont, of course, is uh, wonderful for well, offering. I think that's what, the, yeah. talking to the cyclists last year, they loved the terrain of Vermont yeah. and cycling, and of course, everything about it. Um, but they did love coming up here. So I know that's why your numbers are increasing, and I'm expecting them to continue increasing because it's such a nice place to participate and stay and visit and just be here. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. The, you know, the feedback we got is to have a, a high volume, high intensity event this early in the season is super for, uh, for their training and for the rest of the year. So we've made the courses tough. It is the most challenging racing in New England right now, really? absolutely. With the uh, with the new road race course, it's on par with any of the uh, major pro tours across the country. So that's really exciting to bring something of that magnitude into the area. Just real positive thing, and the reception has been terrific, and continues to be uh, continues to grow in the right direction. Yeah, and it has an economic impact on our community as well, which we with the uh, economic development. Uh, committee talks about a lot is the effect of events on Bennington uh, dollar-wise. Um, I know your racers stay here a couple nights with their families, uh, filling up the hotel rooms, and of course they're all eating, um, and then family members shopping, So it, and then spectators that come to Bennington for the event. Well, there's definitely a multiplier, because mm -hmm. as you say, the spectators as well as the team mechanics, the team right. car drivers, their support people, uh, when you bring in the whole family, if you will, the whole family, the whole entourage that comes along with the racers, you're talking about a factor of three or three and a half to one. Yeah. So for 500 racers, that's 1,500 or more people into the area. And obviously the direct impact is on the hotels and the restaurants and the, and the gas stations and the markets and things like that. But there's a ripple effect that goes throughout the community, absolutely, mm -hmm. is if those people are doing well, then they'll be able to buy new appliances, they'll be able to buy new clothes, they'll be able to, you know, of course, yeah. basically it's an infusion of cash into the economy that wouldn't be here otherwise. And so when I look at events, I look, you know, Tour of the Dragons is great, Shires Marathon, it's another one, I'll get a lot of people from out of state coming to the area. Uh, participating in the events and activities that are here and everybody benefits. Um, Garlic Fest, another one, uh, Battle Day Parade, Car Show, all really, really solid events. And, and I personally, I believe, and get up on the soapbox a little bit, the more events we can do in the area, the better it is for, for the economy. Absolutely. And it's, it's nice to see it's not just the Chamber or the BBC, the large organizations putting on these events, but somebody in the community, a resident, and I know you've done lots of work, um, and I, I enjoyed watching you work with the town and the, uh, the police department and the sheriff's department, uh, just because a lot of people don't see the behind the works. <laughs> There's but, plenty of that, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, and the fact that they're all, they all come to the table with you and want to back you up and say, got to do this, 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 and mostly for safety, but it's obvious at the table that they all want you to do it, and I want to stand behind you and make sure that they're helping you do it so that it's a partnership with the town because they do understand the importance of the events and activities too in the economy. Yes, absolutely. It's been a great partnership with the town and, you know, in, from all the planning stages. And then when you have a wrinkle, you know, there's always a wrinkle in the works and... I'm going to give you one. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and they jump through hoops to help us out. So I have nothing but, you know, the greatest admiration and thanks for the town managers, the police, the sheriff's department, everybody involved. It's really been very, really, really good. Good to hear. Who are you, or how many racers are you expecting this year? I know you, it's kind of hard judging, but I know you're ahead of where you were last year, but you have a goal set? Well, last year we grew by about 10%, and this year I'm expecting to grow by about 20%. On top of and last year, too, so yeah. it's exponentially yeah. taken Yeah, and, and that's... Yeah. The flight path, if you will, is very much the same as the tour of the of the Batten Kill. 
Tour the Bat and Kill is April 13th and 14th, right over in Cambridge, New York. And we're going to have 4,000 cyclists there. And how, how many years and has that race been in its, um, uh, it's in its ninth edition. Wow. But it's in its first year, it only had 175. Well, we started at 350 uh, with the Tour of the Dragons. And uh, Dieter Drake, who's president of Anthem Sports and runs the Tour of the Bat and Kill, he said it took them about four years with the Tour of the Bat and Kill to really hit its stride, really get going. Yeah. There was sort of 175, and then maybe 250, and then they were 350, and then suddenly it went ba-boom and jumped and, and exploded, and now it's regarded as the toughest race in the East. And um, so we're ahead of that flight path right now. We're looking very, very positive, so I expect, I'm not sure if we'll ever see 4,000 people here, but we I certainly so. could see 1,000. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and right now, is so this year to answer your question, probably about 500 to 550. Fantastic, great. And that little uh, wrinkle I was going to bring in is uh, we're meeting with a group uh, right after this uh, segment um, regarding Green Up Day and Clean Up Day. Mm -hmm. May 4th is, that's the Saturday? Yes. That's Vermont Green Up Day. So you're going to get some extra spectators on the side of the roads, but they're going to be picking up trash. So <laughs> if you're picking East Road and uh, Route 7, Keep an eye out for the bikes as well as the cars because uh, they'll be busy on the side of the roads. It will be up. spectacular coming down East Road. Uh, from the top of East Road, nominally sort of, let's say, uh, Buck Hill, down all the way to the finish line. Uh, it would be a good thing that police aren't ticking the cyclists because they'll all be well finished. above the speed limit. Down. Now, when they come out of the middle school, they're going to go down Houghton Lane and then up seven? Yes. All right. Oh, I thought it was the other way. It's, so it's clockwise that they're going to be traveling. We're going to start at the middle school here, where the green dot is, and it will be a neutral parade that is uh, at 15 to 18 miles an hour, very controlled, until they hit the corner of Houghton Lane here. At Houghton Lane, they head west down to 7A, make a turn to the north on 7A, and they'll come up through here. This is Buck Hill, where the Shaftesbury Country Store is. Mm -hmm come across the bridge, dive down past Paulins, and then branch off on Airport Road. At Airport Road, they go uh, past the state police barracks, um, past uh, the, over the railroad tracks, and then they get on Cider Mill Road here. It turns to dirt, and that's actually one of the interesting things is in the Great American Cycling Series, of which the Tour of the Dragons is one of the races, the racers love to race on dirt. Really? It's, it's sort of in the mode of the classic style racing they get in Northern Europe early in the year. Uh, where they're racing, actually they're racing on Roman cobblestone roads, which are terrible to ride on. But it's, uh, you know, it's very natural. Challenging. It's, really it's very, very challenging. Yeah. So from Cider Mill Road, they head up here, which is beautiful and winding, and it sort of steps up in elevation, up to Maple Hill Road. And then they turn the corner onto East Road and they start heading down. Still on dirt here, this part of East Road, until they pop out uh, just before Holy Smoke Road, go under Route 7, and then they head south on East Road again, like this. And that's where they're picking up speed. And that's where they're picking up speed. In this section of the course from Buck Hill Road, which is right here, all the way down to Houghton Road, They'll be going 45 to 50 miles an hour down that stretch. How many is it? How many laps? Depends on the field. Uh, there are many different uh, heats or waves. Think mm -hmm. of it. And uh, starting with the more uh, the beginner groups, category fives, and then working right up to the pro level. Uh, so it goes five, four, three, two, one in in ascending order, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, the Cat 5s will do two loops like this, and then they'll finish down here at D's Marketplace in Delhi. Uh, the middle groups will do three laps, and the Pro Race, which is the last race of the day, uh, will do four laps here and, to, and finish here. So the finishes, they're all going to be at D's? Yes, they'll finish at D's. place to be at, uh, at definitely, the Definitely, yeah. definitely. And, um, and Donna has been wonderful there, very excited about having the finish there. We'll have our arch, our announcers there. Uh, there'll be um, refreshments for the, the, the cyclists, and obviously D's going to have the doors open for everybody to come to the marketplace. Sure. Well, thanks, Jim. That's May 4th that and May 5th.
May 4th in Bennington and uh, May 5th up in Manchester. Fantastic. So uh, put that in your calendars and uh, we're going to have that on the BBC website uh, within a couple of days. Um, all the information in the specifics. So check uh, our website, bet uh, betterbennington.com, and we'll keep you up to date on all the details of the Tour of the Dragons. Awesome. And thanks again. We'll get you in again before the race, um, but keep that date saved. Super. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You bet. Well, I'd just like to thank Jim Marshall for all the work he did on that event, and we're looking forward to it. If you'd like some more information, just want to remind you, uh, in a couple of days, you can go to betterbennington.com and look up all the details to make sure that you get to enjoy the race and uh, participate when the day comes. Uh, but before then, we have another event coming up, and even earlier uh, than the race, is uh, cleanup day downtown. And uh, fortunately, we worked... Uh, it out where there's a local group who I'm going to introduce you to that wanted to do a project and it just so happened that it was on the the weekend that we do the uh, cleanup day downtown. So with that I'm going to introduce you to uh, Nicole and Veronica. Thank you both very much for joining us. Thank you um, And Nicole and Veronica are with uh, AmeriCorps Vista. Mm -hmm. Either one of you, would you, <laughs> what, could you tell everybody what that is? Sure. Um, AmeriCorps VISTA is a national service program and we are here serving in Bennington for one year. We are serving with the Southwestern Vermont Healthcare Group. We primarily support the Alliance for Community Transformations and we work with the Youth Ambassador Program and that is the group that will be working with us and the Better Bennington Corporation on this event. And the event is called Beautify Bennington, a Youth Service Day. It will be held Saturday, April 27th from 1 to 4 p.m. Registration starts at 12.30 p.m. that day. You can also register in advance and we'll get um, into that as we go forth. Uh, the, in the event of inclement weather, we will be having this event on the next day, Sunday, April 28th from 1 to 4 p.m. as well. Great, and I, I apologize, it's Veronica Ariel. Yes. And Nicole Rao. Yes. I'm um, going to back up a little bit just to introduce you uh, or a little bit more to Veronica um, and Nicole. The VISTA program, yes. how does that work? So we are actually um, under the umbrella program, which is Serve Vermont. Um, so VISTA is, um, VISTA stands for Volunteers in Service to America. So both of us uh, graduated from college in May and decided to do a year of service um, and applied to this position and we both got it so we're, we're serving here for a year. Good for both of you. So you know, where did you graduate from college? I graduated from the College of the Holy Cross in Worcester, Mass. And where did you graduate from? I graduated from Penn State University in University Park, Pennsylvania. Fantastic. And where are you originally from? I'm originally from Worcester County, Massachusetts, a tiny town called Millville. Mm -hmm. And I'm from right outside of Rutland, North Clarendon, Vermont. We have a Vermonter. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> so you're familiar with Green Up Day I am. every single year. So I we am. got a we got a week jump start on it. Um, and as, as a Vista program, in your it was it right after your senior year that you both uh, signed up for it, and you get to pick where you go. Yes, the Vista program is through the Corporation for National and Community Service, and they have a website where you can choose which location and which program you'd like to apply to specifically. And those have a variety of topics from healthcare specifically to, um, it, to I'm trying to think of other things that they To have. literacy yes. and education. And working on nutrition as well. So there are a variety of different um, programs in which you can apply, which is great. It, it really does cover a lot, so depending lot on what right. your interest is, um, you can certainly find something that fits you. Well, lucky for us that you chose <laughs> Bennington. So on the 27th, uh, tell us a little bit how that event's going to work and how some of the groups are involved and competitions that we're going to work on. <laughs> sure, so youth and adults will be serving together. We definitely want to encourage um, youth in the community and all those who are young at heart who would like <laughs> to celebrate the youth in their lives to come out and serve on that day. We'll be cleaning up litter. We will also be beautifying empty storefronts or storefront entrances in general. And possibly we may be doing some um, recording of graffiti if time allows. Um, 
Did you say recording of graffiti? Right, marking where graffiti may be or cleaning oh. that up. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like we're going to film graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> There's, um, just for the record, I only found one spot that we oh, have to great. do. Perfect. So that's perfect. And it might be gone. I've been putting the pressure on the landlord for a while right. now, so it might be gone before we even get out there, but yeah, we keep on top that. of it. So. <laughs> but if not, we're all prepared. Okay. And it, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Oh, not a problem. Um, we're looking to provide snacks, water, um, plastic gloves and trash bags will be provided thank you to the Better Bennington Corporation and Green Up Vermont. In the town of Bennington. And the town of Bennington. <laughs> um, and we encourage volunteers to bring your own water bottles because we won't be having um, bottles or cups available. We'll have a few cups if you forget yours, but definitely bring your own water bottle to be green. Um, if you have gardening gloves, brooms, or rakes available to you, please bring those as well. And you also said there's going to be some snacks and food. Mm -hmm. How is that coming about? Oh, yes. Thank you, John. <laughs> uh, recently, the Youth Ambassador Program was a recipient of the Holiday Match Grant from Stewart's Shops, and we're very grateful to Stewart's for that, um, that grant, and it's making this service event possible. It will also be supporting programs that the Youth Ambassadors are doing within their high schools. And those high schools are Mount Anthony Union High School, Arlington Memorial High School, and Grace Christian School as well. I'm glad to hear that you apply for that grant at Stewart's. Um, I guess off or aside uh, from this, Stewart's has always been a, a, a long time supporter of the Better Bennington Corporation's okay. activities because they focus on youth events. Mm -hmm. uh, we're fortunate to have them in Bennington and to have so many of our events line up with uh, uh, their mission as well. Mm -hmm. So glad to hear you applied. You guys deserve it. And okay, I kind of knew you could count on students <laughs> to do it. So nice job. Now, um, it gets a little confusing because May 4th, when I was talking with Jim, I told you earlier, is for the official Vermont Green Up Day where everybody uh, registers for some location in the state and then you get out there on that day and uh, pick up the road signs. Uh, this is going to be on the 27th or in the case of bad weather on the 28th, which is one week earlier and that's usually how we do it downtown. We try to get a one week jump start on it so that people who want to work downtown can also get on the highways on the following Saturday. Uh, that, so that's on the 27th that this event will be taking place. But on the Monday prior to that, which is the 22nd, that's Earth Day. Clark Gable, the manager of Goodwill here in Bennington, uh, has been working with us for the last couple of weeks putting an event together for Earth Day. Uh, what Clark had decided to do is, um, if you can see this map behind me, that's a map that we've prepared for registering to work, do the work in downtown. And we're going to have an event where he's going to host an event over there on Earth Day, the 22nd, where you can come down and uh, hopefully we'll all be there. And then pick sections of downtown. What we normally do when we do it is if you have a group or even you and your family or just you by yourself, you highlight a little section that you want to do and we register you for that section and make sure you have all the tools you need to get it done. Uh, if you do it on the 27th with us, that's when we'll have the refreshments out and competitions going and uh, make it uh, a lot of fun to do it. The, if you want to register prior to the 22nd, you can do that at the town of Bennington. They keep the sign-up sheets until that point. Uh, but on Thursday, we're going to take all that information over to the Goodwill during their event to celebrate Earth Day and then bring it back to the town. So there's lots of ways to sign up, but uh, we're making it easy for you on, the, on Thursday, the, or I'm sorry, on Monday, the 22nd Earth Day. We'd like to thank Goodwill for having that event, and it kind of just worked out well with everything that's happening. Perfectly. Um, also, that weekend is Global Youth Service Day weekend, which is the largest um, service day, even though it's spanning an entire weekend. Um, that happens worldwide. So I believe there are over a hundred countries that are participating. Our event is actually the first registered event in Vermont, so that's pretty awesome. Um, so we're very excited and with that we would just like to celebrate everything um, the youth of this community bring to this community. So I think we're hoping to possibly have a little celebration after the actual Greening Up event um, on the 27th to celebrate. Um, all those who came out and especially the youth who, who are part of this community. It, a big part of the community. Yes. You know, in a lot of communities are like, oh, the kids and the kids, the kids. <laughs> um, there's some shining examples of uh, what we want our youth to be and become. Um, so the fact that once you graduated, you really could have gone into any direction, but you chose to give up 
uh, the, a year of service, especially through Vista. And um, why I'm going in this direction for a little for a second is um, we have a group of students watching us uh, today who I'm wanting <laughs> to make sure they understand what you're here doing <laughs> and uh, what you can do once you're out of school. But uh, there is a, a school down in Wilbraham, Massachusetts. Um, and it's Mrs. Paris's class of the Stony Hill School. Okay. And they have a student there who uh, unfortunately had an accident and was flattened by a bulletin board. Oh, but it no. turned out that uh, he was able to travel because he can now, he mails himself all over the country. <laughs> and his name is Stanley. And uh, Stanley is here in Bennington visiting us today. And I want to introduce you to him. Uh, this is Stanley. Hello, Stanley. And Stanley, uh, I want you guys. I'm introducing him because I want Stanley to look at these two as an example of what you should do once you get out of school and what kind of person you should be in your community. Uh, but Mrs. Paris's class, we want to almost say hi to you, and thanks for uh, allowing Stanley to come to visit us. Uh, if you uh, stay tuned, we're going to uh, take you around a little bit and show you how we treat uh, visitors to Bennington. And we're going to send him home with a lot of gifts for you guys in the class. So I'd like to thank Alyssa Russell for uh, suggesting that Stanley comes to visit Bennington, Vermont. We know Alyssa and her family, the Russells, come up here uh, every Columbus Day weekend. And uh, they know all the fun spots for the kids uh, to visit while they're here in Bennington. And so I'm going to make sure that I take Stanley to all those spots and show him where you like to go. <laughs> um, but thanks. And you guys really are an example of what a student should aspire to. Thank you, um, Thank you. As I get older, and we're, we love having you in Bennington, and you're going to make a, a lasting impact on our community long after you leave. Yeah. You have any plans after you? Yeah. <laughs> That's the question oh, of the week. Question. <laughs> That's okay. I have actually applied to graduate schools, um, hopefully to pursue a master's degree in public health, but we'll see how that goes. I haven't sure heard back yet, well. so cross your fingers for me. <laughs> and we'll say prayers for you too. Thank you. <laughs> And I'll be looking for um, other employment opportunities after my VISTA term has ended and I'm looking in um, healthcare administration, anything to do with that type of programming. Back in the Worcester area or are you? I am not limiting my search so <laughs> right. I do not know where I'll end up. <laughs> where would you like to end up? Do you have an idea? And the reason we ask is sure. you do have an idea? Um, I, just the Northeast or the Mid-Atlantic is yeah. where I'm looking. Very good. Mm -hmm. How about you? Are you thinking of staying in the Northeast? Or, or, or I am actually planning um, probably to leave the Northeast. I went to school, again, in math, so New England has been my little hub for a little while, so I want to uh, expand and see you know, what else America has. So. Right. Where have you been? Have you been out to the West Coast yet? I have not. Okay. No, I check it out <laughs> before you make a decision where you want to be. Perfect. <laughs> Especially like Southern California, okay. you might never come back. <laughs> it's beautiful. That's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of fun. Uh, any other messages you want to get out? Um, this is going to run through the month, so we got sure. quite a few days that people get to see this and. Um, I think we would just also like to um, talk about registering in advance. Um, you can definitely join us at the Goodwill event on April 22nd. That would be great. If you're unable to make that event, there's definitely an opportunity for you as well. Um, Nicole will be the contact person for that. And Would you like to share your contact sure. information? Sure. <laughs> you can certainly give me a call. My number is 802-440-6034. Or you can email me, um, it's just Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E, period, R-A-U, at svhealthcare.org. And healthcare is all one word. Fantastic. So we're going to encourage you to register ahead of time. That'll yes. make it easier for us to plan mm -hmm. what we got to do. Are there certain groups yet that we have talked about that are already going to be participating? Sure. So the Youth Ambassador Program, um, the students will definitely be participating. Mm -hmm. We're encouraging sports teams to come out together or student organizations such as the Interact Club. We definitely like to see um, student organizations and teams participating together. We did forget to talk about our competition. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so maybe we absolutely. should talk about that. <laughs> uh, there will be a competition for teams, and teams can be anywhere from five to ten people. So that will be the limit. You have to have at least five people. We will be having a prize for the team that can collect the most trash, trash bags full of litter. So if you collect the most trash, mm -hmm. then you will be receiving a special prize. 
and we're going to keep that a secret. <laughs> and we definitely encourage you to come to the celebration after. Um, we're hoping that we'll be on the town office lawn, but we're not sure about the location at that point. It's only because I'm, I haven't asked yet. Oh, but, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I will be for this place, I hope. <laughs> um, Great. Excellent. Excellent. Um, well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad you got the, and I'm encouraging you. So we got some great people here, some great groups. And speaking of groups, Bob Marine's yes. group yes. is uh, the cadets. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the, not the full name, is it? Cadets. Mm -hmm. It's cadets from the high school. Um, is one of the teams already signed oh, up. Oh, great. Wonderful. Yeah, so thanks Perfect. to that group. Um, Nicole, uh, Veronica, thank you again very much for joining thank us. You. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on putting the event together. It, it's not your first time around the block either. You, all, you did MLK service day about a month ago. We did, yes. On January 21st we had a day of service for Martin Luther King Jr. and we had about 50 volunteers that day and most of them were youth. We had youth volunteers from the Teens for Change group and also the Youth Ambassador program and Southern Vermont College students also came out that day so it was wonderful. Excellent. And I saw you, we were uh, getting ready to prep to do Spotlight. <laughs> and we, we went over and uh, had lunch at Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. And that's where you guys, your whole group was over there volunteering for the day. Mm -hmm. So it's great. So you guys are doing a lot of great work. Thank you. All right. And good luck to both of you. Thanks. I, Thank I look you. forward to working on this project with you. Uh, and again, I'm just encouraging you, please sign up for this event. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll be rewarding. Uh, and get to you work with the youth in our community. We're going to wrap up today's show uh, here at a new spot. We haven't been out here yet, but, uh, well, we haven't been out here filming yet. We come here all the time. Uh, we're at Papa Pete's Diner. Uh, I think you all know where that is. Uh, located just before the entrance to the new Route 279 Eastern Lake. So an important spot for us because it's going to be our basically our welcome center and uh, area on the east end of town. But we stopped out here today to talk with Kathy Portolano, the owner of the restaurant. And I want to thank her for uh, doing such a great job in this end of town. It's a real popular place with locals and with visitors coming into town. The interesting thing I was just talking about with Kathy is it's the last diner as you're heading out of Bennington until you get to Wilmington where there's Dots and Dots will be back pretty soon. And then that's 20 miles away. And then another 20 miles is a Chelsea Diner in Brattleboro. So three great diners on Route 9 or the Molly Stark Trail uh, starting in Bennington and going all the way across the state to Brattleboro. Uh, stop in and check it out. Uh, the Papa Pete's Diner is open six days a week from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. and they're closed on Wednesdays. So you're not going to see Kathy and her family here on Wednesdays because that's where they've decided to go spend some family time up at Harriman Reservoir. So if you're really looking for them on Wednesdays, that's the place to go. Uh, and they need the day off because Kathy reminded me that you won't find a microwave in this uh, the diner. Everything's made fresh, uh, a lot of local items, and uh, got to come and check it out. Before we close, I promised that we would have done, or we would do the code word for today. In, in honor of our guest, today's code word is VISTA, V-I-S-T-A. All you got to do is go to the Better Bennington Facebook page, type in VISTA in the messages, and then we'll pick another winner for next month. Um, don't forget to go to betterbennington.com, that's our website, to see where we'll have the, list, uh, the winner's name listed for this last month. Uh, you win a $25 gift certificate. Uh, it's called Downtown Dollars, so you can use it anywhere between 15 shops downtown. So, uh, please, thanks for staying uh, tuned all the way through, and please send in the word Vista so that we can get your name on the list to pick a winner. Last thing before we wrap it up, uh, on, the, on the Better Bennington website, we have a list of, on the front page, the downtown activities, but then if you click on activities around town, you can see other things that people sent to us, so you can check out what's going on. The reason I'm bringing that up again today is because uh, Madison's Restaurant on Main Street has really, actually Desiree Post and Jared have been doing a lot of work bringing uh, live entertainment back to Main Street uh, on a regular basis in a restaurant. Uh, already started, but now they have live entertainment every Friday and Saturday night between at least 7 to 9, sometimes 7 to 10. And then once a month they're going to be hosting a large band. Uh, we got, they have Double Down booked and they have Funk in the Trunk booked. Um, so they're really uh, stepping it up a notch, even though they're doing record numbers at the restaurant already. So congratulations to Madison, and special thanks to Desiree and to Jared for organizing all this. I know it's appreciated by the, the owners there, but it's really appreciated by us downtown to bring some really exciting uh, nightlife 
uh, downtown to complement what we already have. So we're checking out. I uh, just want to say thanks for joining us again, and we'll see you uh, in May. Uh, but don't forget to go to our website because a lot of activities are coming up.